In general, malnutrition is commonly referred to as undernutrition. Malnutrition can occur because a person is not getting enough food, or when adequate nutrients are consumed in the diet, but they're not well digested or absorbed properly. In hospital-related malnutrition, this can result in compromised immune responses, increased risk of infections, poor wound healing, delayed recovery from illness, and longer hospitalization. Malnutrition is often associated in people's minds with uh, low weight or, or obesity, but it's bigger than that. It's more fundamental than that. It goes right to the heart of our health and our ill health, and it's inextricably mixed with some diseases, and food is often a cure to, to many of those diseases. Or at least it's a preventive to ensure the conditions don't get worse. So it's more than just uh, weight. Based upon informed research, it is estimated that up to 5% of the population of Europe, the world's richest region, are malnourished. Malnutrition is Europe's hidden weight problem. It affects the most vulnerable in society, the elderly at home or in nursing homes and hospitals, and the sick. Several transcontinental investigations show that one-third of patients in hospitals and nursing homes are malnourished. In the countries of the EU in general, more than 10% of individuals aged over 65 years are undernourished. Well, I think in Europe today we have uh, still a very uh, major problem with malnutrition in hospitals and also in, in any kind of care situation. Disease is one of the commonest causes of uh, malnutrition in developed countries. It often occurs with uh, chronic illnesses as well as acute illnesses. Our nutritional needs change as we age, but the link between a good diet and staying healthy remains. We really do need to eat as many types of food as possible, fish and meat, or vegetarian alternatives including pulses, milk and dairy foods. Our social structure of today also makes it uh perhaps more easy for people to get malnourished. And usually this is a problem uh, which professionals, nurses, doctors or physiotherapists are not really aware of. The health implications of malnutrition are enormous and come into sharp focus when people enter hospital. Research from the UK shows that malnourished individuals stay in hospital longer and succumb to infection more often. They visit their general practitioner more frequently and require more intensive nursing care than individuals who are adequately nourished. The patient becomes weaker and there is an increased risk of infection-related complications. Well, the two major causes of expenses of cost for malnutrition occur in hospitals and, uh, and also in social care outside hospitals. The solutions to malnutrition exist. They should be the screening of each patient entering a healthcare institution. The screening instrument, NRS 2002, uh, has a lot in common with other screening instruments. Uh, it uh, gathers information on the present body weight of the patient, the BMI, recent weight loss of the patient and uh, recent uh, food intake, whether or not the patient has decreased his or her food intake over the last uh, week or so. Fighting undernutrition and malnutrition is a human right and a societal obligation. So what does it take to make things change? It's interesting that the discussion is now ongoing and people are talking about it. It is becoming an issue and that's very encouraging. I, I'm optimistic that we can change this state of things. There's many people and many experts that have gathered good scientific evidence to show we have a problem and we can solve it. Nutrition Day is one of the biggest uh, research projects that have been run in an international network to promote awareness and to increase precise information about malnutrition related to diseases. It covered a population of more than 50,000 patients 
and it was one of the very surprising findings in the Nutrition Day project that less than 40% of patients eat all what they are served in a hospital. Nutritional solutions are already available and in use to provide tailored solutions to malnourished individuals or patients at risk, whether they're living in the community, in care homes or in hospitals. However, they should be much more widely used. We are giving these instruments, uh, sci scientists are giving these instruments to uh, political decision makers and we hope they start changing their mind. But we need also the lay public to be aware that they have a problem and to demand uh, their problem to be solved. Until people don't demand it, it may be difficult. I think the, the most important issue is actually gaining recognition of the problem itself.